assalamu alaikum i am dr zishan and we are going to present the second part of uh, unit diversion lectures and my moderator is dr mudassir the learning objectives of today's presentation includes the management of the unit diversion the follow up and the complications of the unit diversion the management includes stoma care clean intermittent catheterization psychological care and the social care of the patient common site for stoma formation are either the iliac fossa or the umbilicus and the most common types uh, are the conduit or the cutaneous uterostomies problems common problems patient face with uh, stoma are the of the drainage bag and the skin problems the drainage bag can be dislodged it might leak or have a bad smell the skin problems includes excoriation due to the leakage and uh, some patient have uh, allergic rash to the uh, apparatus or it might have uh, pain to the patient dr suman <coughs> what is a stoma and it's opening of the conduit on the external surface of the skin oh. anyone with better definition dr farzi is out pouching of uh, any part of gut on the surface of skin okay. only gut dr kamal uh, what else gut ureter and <coughs> what is the third type which are the bladder okay what else is there any stoma made in the neck trigostomy is also a stoma so any opening of uh, uh, a hollow viscous on the body surface is a stoma right so you all have seen the stoma where we commonly deal with the abdominal stomas urine and uh, bladder so why skin problems occur what what are the skin problems that, that occur with the uh, urinary stomas dr sherja why why it occurs is it more with the urine or it is more with the fecal stomas okay. what in urine causes skin to scoriate uh, the ph of your... which type of ph there is a alkaline ph why the urine ph is alkaline with the stoma when patient has stoma uh, what is the common uh, form of uh, ph basically the urine ph is alkaline when the stoma is there why it become alkaline normally urine is more of acidic because so the, these patient with stoma tend to have acidosis in serum and in reaction to that body produce alkaline urine and alkaline urine tend to cause excoriation of the skin right yes that should prevent serum uh, acidosis if serum acidosis is corrected then urine will automatically become a, right chal <clears throat> skin and drainage bag problems can be prevented by educating patient regarding uh, right sized opening of the skin barrier with regular drainage of the bag and the, to keep the urine acidic the urine can be acidic by um, 
taking plenty of water, use of canberry, and eating animal protein, including and uh, diet with dairy products and fermented products. Low pH uh, prevents UTI and uh, struvite uh, crystal formation and also prevents the malodor. These are the two common drainage bags used. Uh, one is the two-piece uh, ostomy bag and the other one is the single piece. And patients should be educated about applying the stoma correctly by um, adequate size opening of the skin barrier to dry the side before applying the uh, wafer, uh, fill the gaps between wafer and the skin with the stoma paste and frequent drainage of the uh, stoma bag. Some other issues regarding social uh, with the stomas are uh, social, psychological, sexual, sports, religion, and travel. These are the issues which most patients uh, ask the caretaker, and we should know about it. So, uh, Dr. Babar, um, you have a patient who had a stoma, and how will you counsel him? How will you uh, tell him how to get social with other people? How to get socialized with other people? A patient with stoma. In order to help him socialize with other people, what can we offer him? Dr. Islam. Uh, <clears throat> First of all, we should teach him how to insert stoma bag over the body. That's all fine. Second. That's fine. That, that really. uh, you have to make this person go back into society and work as a normal individual. I, I will ask you that you have to regularly uh, empty the bag. What support you can offer him to make, for example, <laughs> he, he can use the perfume. Mm. As well as uh, uh, when he is when he has to uh, empty his bag as well. Mm. So uh, these things can be helpful in his quality of life uh, regarding uh, social issues. So yeah. uh, Dr. Prakani. He he should always carry extra supplies with him. What else, Dr. Hassan? Uh, we can also uh, take him to ward and uh, or if any patient already is using the bag and it happens frequently so that he can be reassured and uh, in that way he can get some uh, mental bag in which he carries that and we can counsel him to have an extra bag with him always. So basically what happens, uh, what you said, uh, they are patient support groups, right? You combine a lot of patients who have similar problem and you make them meet with each other. That help in them understand the problems that other people are facing and the solutions they are using to help cope the problem. So we, there has to be a group of patients with stoma and they, they should meet with each other, they should be they in contact with each other because they understand themselves better, they understand, they can help the, uh, the other person better. So patient support group is the main thing which is used to promote socialization among uh, different patients, for example, transplant patient, any patient who is different from the normal population who is coping to get back into society, uh, you use these groups, right? So, as we can discuss, the patient can socialize. He may use perfumes. He may have extra supplies of the um, stoma and the other things, and he should be counseled. And the other thing is uh, <clears throat> the caretaker. And if uh, the patient is a, uh, is a younger one or is a child or he is very old who cannot take care of himself, you, uh, you need to tell him that he must have a, take, take a uh, caretaker and caretaker should have the ability to deal with the all the problems of this patient, right? So again, the similar thing, psychological support. Um, you expose this patient to different uh, um, patient groups that help them cope with the problem. Next.
Okay, what about his sexual activity? A patient with stoma, is it contraindicated to have sex? I am asking, is it contraindicated for them to have sex? Doctor, uh, Doctor Sir, how, how uh, what can you tell your patient who had who has a stoma about uh, resuming his sexual activities? Uh, well, sir. I think uh, uh, in the social environment, he should also uh, take care of those things, use perfumes and keep it empty mm -hmm. so that uh, okay, in, in general, these patients uh, um, are they fit for sexual activity like they have ED or they do not have ED or they may have ED, they may not have ED? Dr. Shaija? For example, a patient has radical cystectomy. Uh, sexual uh, activity should be contraindicated in initial uh, post-operative day, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, just like any other surgery. Uh, yeah. This is where, uh, okay, stoma is made. Uh, this will lead to uh, any wound. Um, Uh, patient can indulge in uh, sexual activities. Uh, for that, uh, we need to in empty the back before sexual uh, contact. Uh, the person should uh, have a proper hygiene before uh, uh, going to his or her partner. Uh, beside that, uh, perfumes uh, etc. can be used uh, so that the partner will not get uh, offended. Uh, beside that, uh, again, the patient support group uh, mm -hmm. is uh, also necessary. So that people can discuss about uh, their sexual activities with their partner, uh, if like they are free, uh, free to do it. Uh, that's it. So, anything to add, Doctor Mustafa? Uh, yes. If if your patient is married, you should involve the partner before surgery. Right? and explain them that how this will go on in the future and most of the male patients if uh, they have uh, uh, any sort of diversion they may have erectile dysfunction they may have problems with uh, importance and that can be treated uh, medically or surgically whatever the methods are and uh, you have to consider this right this is not a contraindication for these patients once they are stable once they are over their uh, immediate post-operative period they can resume their sexual activities right Yes, that's why we are teaching here. Sports activity. So can they play sports? Which type of sports they can play, Dr. Nawaz? So just me a vigorous activity now. So indoor kya games, kya sakte, table tennis, whatever games. Vigorous activity now, so what do they in general, contact, like contact, contact sport sports. Now. So you will tempt them not to play contact sport. So even if they play non-contact sport, what advice you will give them? Uh, abdominal bend. Okay. Um, so non-contact sports, so abdominal belt use can use. Okay. Again, वही चीज़ का extra supplies उनके पास होनी चाहिए और जो उनका coach है या जो भी उनको देख रहा है उसको इस इस बारे में मालूम होना चाहिए कि उसको problem है उसको कैसे deal करनी है ठीक है तो sports भी कोई contraindication नहीं है they they should be allowed or they should be encouraged to participate in sports use of the abdominal belts are important uh, in regard of sports and sexual activity and socializing. The religion. So, religion.
can they practice their religion and what problems do they commonly face? Anyone? तो इसके लिए क्या करें नहीं पहला सवाल तो ये होता है मस्जिद जा सकते हैं नहीं जा सकते तो जा सकते हैं या नहीं जा सकते हैं कंट्रा इंडिकेशन टू गो इन मस्जिद बीइंग ए स्टोम ऑफ बैग ऑन बट दैट्स व्हाट वी थिंक बट बट देयर इज नीड टू एजुकेट द पीपल सराउंडिंग्स एंड आवर स्कॉलर्स एज़ वेल इनवॉल्व देम इन मस्जिद that there is no any restriction and uh, even our allah say that uh, we can't say no to anyone for their own religious uh, activities are basically uh, we like any discussion on uh, these topics right uh, i try to search uh, to find any uh, material which supports whether they these patients these patients uh, can go to masjid or cannot go to go to masjid so there is no reliable information out there for uh, this thing this is an area that need to be explored uh, with our scholars and we need to sit with them we need to educate first these scholars and then these scholars can educate our patient to do uh, what can be done and what cannot be done so this is an area that need exploration yeah. the next question patient asked can they travel can they travel every every travel bike car bus cruise ship anything or is, is there any contraindication to traveling dr jamal junior dr jamal but you have you should carry all uh, the uh, supply to your uh, in your hand bag so if if, if you have a patient who is about to travel to usa and he came to you Uh, so, what uh, advice will you give him? Doctor Nasim, your patient with stoma is going to US. Uh, sir, he can travel uh, to anywhere in the world uh, with uh, three or more means a lot of bags. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there is no such a con- contraindication for travel. So is there anything you would like to provide him before he is going? Right. So you should provide him a case summary. Why? Because um, uh, he may be restricted from the travel uh, at airport. Okay. So, so he he he, he, he will need some sort of documentation so that he carry on those bags into the airplane. And uh, anything else, Doctor Shaheed sir. Uh, does it matter where he is going let's say he is going to iraq so he should not go swimming he should not go anywhere where i you, you you should or he should try to explore the area where he is going what help is available out there yeah if right. if the area is rainy he should help. no i i mean in terms of medical care if he has any problem where to contact if uh, he is going to let's say iraq or usa or uk or wherever he is going there there will be certain um, groups or hospitals where uh, he can have his stomach care right and there may be language barriers if you provide uh, somebody in urdu and he goes to usa nobody can understand that so you have to consider all these things and tell your patient that these things are to be done right acha stoma ke sath next is jo cic hota how many of you have taught your patient to do cic raise your hands 
Dr. Fazin, good slogan is speaking. So, Dr. Fazin, how you teach a female patient to do CIs? Yeah, uh, sir, uh, we we first start with telling them about the hygiene and the frequency of CIC because different people have uh, different needs uh, of the frequency. Like uh, to some people, we tell them to do CIC at least three times a day. To some people, we tell them to do it four times a day. And then we start with the hygiene that you have to like clean your hands every time you do this. And uh, then we first uh, show them about uh, we, we tell them about the nelligent tube and how can, uh, that there are different sizes of nelligent tube. And we tell them about their appropriate size nelligent tube that this is the size which is available. Most of the times we also provide them with the extra nelligent tube as well. And then uh, we also uh, tell them about the xylocaine gel and we explain the whole procedure that after wearing gloves and washing your hands truly and wearing a gloves you we have they have to like uh, apply the xylocaine gel on the tip of the uh, nelligent tube and insert it and after and once their bladder is empty they have to remove it wash the nelligent tube with warm water and place it back in the uh, in the covering okay so dr zoha anything to add So for females, we are also going to tell them in what position it would be most comfortable in for them to do CIC, like uh, uh, the type of commode that they have uh, according to that. And if they're, going, if they're going to do it while lying down or uh, while on the commode, we can also tell them about the position of the, uh, on how to do CIC on that. Okay. Dr. Farzeen. Do they need to wear gloves? So I think it's better that they should because uh, um, we don't know that how much uh, take or how much uh, hygiene they are taking care of. And uh, in order to prevent UTIs, which are very frequent female patients, especially, it's better that they wear gloves. If they are not wearing gloves, uh, washing their hands sufficiently with the warm water and soap will also uh, prevent UTIs. But at least they should take care of the hygiene. The whole idea of wearing gloves is that they shouldn't contam uh, that they shouldn't contaminate their urinary tract. So it's not mandatory. It's not mandatory. Mm. And they, they are not supposed to use sterilized glove at all, and they may or may not use gloves. It is not mandatory because the whole technique is not a sterile technique. It's clean. Right? Uh, actually, so, sorry, mm. sorry. Sir. Uh, uh, about the gloves, uh, uh, I was once told that a carefully washed hand is cleaner than the yes. disposable gloves we use and patient cannot afford uh, to use uh, sterile gloves each and every time. So uh, it's better if you they, clean they, up. They do not need to use sterile gloves. They, it has to be just non-sterile gloves. Okay. So We have not only teach them, we have to demonstrate them as well as show them videos uh, how CIC they should perform. Okay. So, for male patient, who will tell uh, Dr. Sian? You have a male patient to teach CIC, how will you teach him? Uh, so, most of the things uh, we start with explaining the different sizes of catheters. Mm -hmm. And uh, in male patients, in male patient, which size catheter you will advise? Sir, uh, depends on the size is 25 years old so we can use usually you can use 12 fr or 10 okay. fr smaller diameter catheters and uh, in male patients you have to after cleaning thoroughly cleaning their hands and uh, uh, they have to apply xylocaine gel over the catheter and uh, we have to demonstrate by showing the videos as well and the insertion technique uh, is that they have to uh, slightly uh, pull their uh, uh, penis and then ins uh, start inserting. And uh, once they're in the bladder, they have to drain uh, the bladder and they also have to apply a little bit of suprapubic compression. So for complete emptying of the bladder. Okay, so both these are uh, what, what both of you told is a uh, on CIC. So is there any other form of CIC we do? Yes, they can do CIC with uh, different uh, different uh, Mitrofenov channel and also use that for CIC. Anything else to add in both these techniques?
So how how to clean it? You send it for sterilization. What you do? Any other surface? Same. And he will again wash it before using it. Right. So anything else to add? The patient has augmented bladder. G. Doctor Dalal. He or she is in the washroom or proper place. Not outside. Yes. They have to do bladder wash as well. If it's augmented bladder or it's a new bladder, there's bowel in there and they have to do, uh, they have to wash the bladder. How many times in a day? Every six hours. <laughs> so it, it, it depends upon, on the amount of mucus they usually make at least once a day. If they make more in mucus, they can do it twice a day. Same. Uh, to add on, uh, we should uh, tell the patient to uh, do CIC every four hours uh, in, uh, and also check the color of the urine and turbidity and note, the, note down the volume of the uh, urine. And he might uh, have uh, note, the, note the smell of the urine. Yeah. There are two terms, CIC and CISC. What is the difference between CISC is self catheterization, CIC is someone else doing. Usually in children, some caretaker do the CIC, and in adult patients, uh, usually they do themselves. But some patient cannot do the, uh, themselves, which is the group which cannot do CIC by themselves. Paralyzed patient, right? So, if patient is wheelchair bound or is quadriplegic, he may not be able to do CIC by himself. So, someone else will have to do it. Right. Yes. So, then that's about continent and non continent divergence. If he has a continent divergence, he must be doing CIC. If he has a non content diversion, then he has to take care of the bag and all those things. Okay. Now comes the follow up uh, the urinary diversion, and which depends on the primary disease and the diversion we have done. And one and should focus on the stoma, the diversion, and the primary disease in the follow up cases. For the stroma, uh, we should look for any uh, and ask for any prolapse, the sinking of the stroma any skin issues, stenosis, leak, or any parastomal herniation. For diversion, uh, we should keep in mind the bowel segment used for diversion. It is, uh, is it continent or incontinent? And uh, how are the electrolytes of the uh, patient? And uh, regarding the capacity of the uh, diversion and different uh, metabolic uh, disorders such as bone disease, and can be uh, regarding the malignancy, which can be sec uh, second malignancy or the primary disease. Primary disease in, uh, can be benign and malignant. Benign includes uh, any neurological factors and diseases, and uh, such as um, second is the tuberculosis, idiopathic and traumatic uh, disease. Why, why it is important to consider the primary disease when you are following these patients? Yes. If the patient is having cancer, bladder cancer, we have to see his uh, cancer, cancer status and staging. Uh, uh, in the follow-up, we do CT scan to see his uh, cancer staging after one year. Uh, the, uh, is this recurrence or not? Right. Uh, if he has any benign disease, for example, he had an augmented blood. Yes, sir. Then we have to look for the strictures. And these things in the early. Oh, we're talking about point. the primary disease. For example, a patient where he had a spinal cord injury, and for, uh, he later on had an augmented bed. Why you want to see for spinal cord injury? Should we consider the spinal cord injury, or we just see our own bladder and then forget about the patient as a whole? Doctor Sman, patient with spinal cord injury, you are following your bladder. 
but what else you would like to make sure doesn't happen so first of all he can have bed so you have to take yes, care sir. of them what else can he can often, have? they often make stones in the stoma yes. in the long term we will go this tomorrow up next tomorrow again or the mother of the version to win was kayla what can they can ask me all of it taking a about or contract as one that they take it or new onset neurological deficit was like that ठीक है तो आपने प्राइमरी डिजीज को बोलना नहीं है कि यानी कि बस अब अपने ब्लेडर को देख रहे हैं और बाकी पेशेंट को नहीं देख रहे हैं तो पेशेंट को एज अ होल देखें तो उसको मेलेग्नेंसी है तो मेलेग्नेंसी का फॉलो अप होना है अगर उसको कोई और प्राइमरी डिजीज थी जिस वजह से भी उसको प्रॉब्लम हुई थी उसको आपने कंसीडर करना नो गम्स द कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ द यूनिट डाइवर्जन व्हिच आर क्लासिफाइड अकॉर्डिंग टू द बाउल रिलेटेड द कॉम्प्लिकेशंस ऑफ द यूरेटर द स्टोमा रिलेटेड एंड द मेटाबॉलिक कॉम्प्लिकेशंस Uh, regarding bowel complications uh, first comes the fistula which is uh, within the first several weeks of uh, the surgery and it can be a fecal uh, and urinary and as we are discussing urinary diversion the most leak is in the fistula or the urinary and second comes the obstruction uh, which depends upon the segment used and the causes are adhesions strictures uh, volvulus the obstruction can be pseudo obstruction also uh, such as ogilvy syndrome in the first few days of uh, surgery the elongation uh, of the uh, segmented part of the bladder uh, should be uh, should should be considered as a um, and taken as a complication if there is a distal obstruction in the conduits or if there is a infrequent uh, catheterization of the pouches which this causes the elongation of the segmented part the strictures are mostly the late complications and it is uh, as a consequence of uh, lymphoid depletion of the intestine which is exposed to the urine the intestine uh, segment may also be blocked by the hypertrophic mesenteric lymph nodes the other complications include the volvulus and the ileus this is the picture of uh, volvulus of an uh, orthotopic right colonic uh, right colon bladder uh, which was uh, due to infrequent catheterization now comes the complications of uh, uh, related to the urine and uh, <clears throat> in the early uh, complications there is incidence of uh, urinary intestinal leak and it is markedly nowadays reduced by the use of stents other complications include urethro intestinal stenosis and the reflux and the pyelonephritis the pyelonephritis or the in infections can be in uh, early as well as long term complication complications related to stoma uh, these include the prolapse the stenosis bleeding and hernia now comes the metabolic complications which include the electrolyte imbalances altered sensorium abnormal drug metabolism osteomalacia and growth retardation why, why does electrolyte abnormalities occur in patient with uh, diverge dr ali mulla what is the basic mechanism what happens we have to see the diversion if we if we take a gastric no in in general what is the basic mechanism any part of gut what happens what 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 is wrong why electrolyte like, become abnormal because because urine is exposed to a different mucosa that is a mucosa this gut gut mucosa mm -hmm. it takes osmolarity of electrolyte so what is the problem with gut mucosa when it is exposed to urine the, compared to transitional telepathy it exposed to different electrolyte it is absorptive right the problem is that gut mucosa is absorptive when it is exposed to urine so what it what does it absorb dr kayum from the urine what does it is it absorb ammonia what happens ammonia. next dr shrijan ammonia is absorbed into serum in exchange for Commonly, uh, due to prolonged uh, contact of the urine uh, in the colon, uh, 
sorry, in the bowel uh, epithelium, the commonly absorbed uh, electrolytes uh, are chloride, uh, ammonium, and water. And after ammonium is absorbed, again, it's uh, broken down, and this uh, uh, results in the formation of uh, 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 Dr. Mishtar. Sir, different uh, gut segment absorb different kinds of electrolytes uh, and depending upon their normal function in the body. Like if we use jejunum, it uh, causes absorption of uh, sodium chloride and like in case of, uh, it's not only absorbed but it also excrete and uh, which is further absorbed and put burden on the kidneys back. Ammonium serum. Sir, ammonia. Uh, Ammonium जो है वो साथ क्या ले गया Ammonium के साथ क्या ले गया रहा है? Ammonia hydrogen के साथ आता है Ammonium के form में तो अगर एक positive ion serum add होगा तो किसी positive ion को जाना भी होगा in exchange of which commonly positive ion sodium और sodium और potassium sodium और potassium भाई तो वो exchange होगा तो जब hydrogen add हो गया serum में तो क्या चीज change हो गई acidosis acidosis हो गई ठीक है तो जो इनकी सीरम की पीएच पे चेंज हो रही है और उसके इलेक्ट्रोलाइट जो कंसिस्टेंसी थी वो भी अल्टर हो रही है ठीक है दिस टेबल इलस्ट्रेट्स द इलेक्ट्रोलाइट इंबैलेंस रिगार्डिंग द यूज सेगमेंटेड ऑफ द गट and in case of stomach the electrolyte imbalance uh, is metabolic alkalosis due to excessive secretion of uh, proton by the gastric segment and it may be um, severe when associated with de dehydration and it causes uh, the uh, increase in the aldosterone which further increase the de dehydration and uh, it also causes uh, in depletion of the potassium so it is a hyperkalemic and metabolic alkalosis. The treatment of choice is um, for non-sweat cases include the uh, S2 blocker and proton pump inhibitors. And in life-threatening cases, arginine hydrochloride infusion can be given. Hold on. ACT. <laughs> When jejunum uh, is interposed uh, as a segment uh, in the diversion, and the, there's hyperkalemic, hypochloromic, uh, metabolic acidosis, and uh, this, in, uh, this this is it is due to increased sodium and chloride uh, secretion by uh, and and there's increased reabsorption of potassium and hydrogen ions. And the treatment of choice is uh, hydration and sodium bicarbonate and thiazide diuretics. In ileum, uh, there is hypochloric metabolic acidosis and the ammonium chloride is absorbed in exchange uh, uh, for the potassium. And the, uh, it is treated by uh, giving potassium citrate or the sodium, uh, sodium citrate. Altered sensorium. The altered sensorium can be associated with magnesium deficiency uh, which either could be due to nutrition depletion or in relation to the magnesium uh, wasting by the kidney. Drug intoxication, these drugs are those which are uh, unchanged um, by the kidneys but are reabsorbed by the interposed segment of the gut. And ultrasensorium can be due to uh, diabetic hyperglycemia uh, and this is due to the uh, excessive absor absorption of uh, glucose uh, by the gut and the immunogenic coma which we have discussed uh, if you are in emergency and you receive a patient who had some form of uh, diversion in a state of altered sensorium so what most important step you will take as a urologist dr michal michal dr Sfian. A patient with altered sensorium 
had an augmented blood uh, three months back as a urologist but important thing to do vital the most after checking vitals we would check uh, the electrolytes asyan sir after checking the patient's vitals it's all done one single thing you want to do sir uh, sir you will check electrolytes of the patient ha huh? electrolytes including magnesium wo to 5 seconds mein aayenge abhi kya kare sabse pehle kya kare abhi jis kar dr kaushar to new surgical ic agar maine kaha as a urologist aap urologist hain ड्रेनेज पे डालेंगे ड्रेनेज पे डालेंगे सबसे पहले आप ड्रेनेज पे ठीक है क्या कुछ कह एक्सक्यूज मी आई वन वन मिनट यस आई वांट टू कमेंट ऑन वन थिंग दैट दिस इज व्हाट हैपेंस इन एग्जाम यस दिस इज व्हाट हैपेंस इन एग्जाम यू पीपल आर एट फॉल्ट द एग्जामिनर इज नॉट एग्जामिनर नोस दैट व्हाट टू आस्क ही ही इज गिविंग यू हिंट्स He is constantly asking you again and again. He is constantly giving you hints. Okay, you people are either not aware of it because of lack of knowledge, or you people are not understanding his question. Multiple hints have been given. So try to understand what the examiner is asking. Main main bas sirf I I wanted to comment. You may continue. Say thank you. the other complications are, are the recurrent infections and urolithiasis and the most common uh, stones uh, present in urine diversions are the calcium magnesium and phosphate stones and due to alkaline uh, urine and uh, another complication is the malabsorption syndrome uh, which is due to the significant loss of the gut and uh, such as in jejunum we may uh, have uh, uh, a malabsorption of the fat and calcium and folic acid and in ileum we have deficiency of vitamin b12 uh with persistent uh, acidosis the the uh, bone metabolism is also disturbed and there is excessive release of uh, bone calcium which causes osteomalacia and and last complication is the uh, malignancy which is uh, which can be which has been reported Uh, as a second malignancy in the uh, segmented gut and most common are the dino carcinomas thank you okay.